Thank you. Well, as Jude says, I am indeed the director of the Alfred Gillett Trust. So behind you are some images about trust material just to give you a bit of a flavour of what our normal day jobs entail. Thank you very much for the opportunity to introduce today's exciting programme of discussion, presentation and discovery. It's a real treat to be here at the Wells and Mendip Museum where, appropriately, the stories of many of the Cathedral Masons are told. I'm delighted to have been able to play a minute role in supporting this inspiring project through my esteemed colleague, Jude Saunders, as I do believe St Cuthbert's has a very bright future. They've employed the best elements of progressive museology to share and protect these magnificent sculptures, which are of national, if not international, importance. I'll wait to hear Jerry's verdict in due course. And though I know I say this at the risk of embarrassing Jude, through her dedication, creativity and diligence, St Cuthbert's PCC has generated a vital broad base of support, exemplified by the array of project funders from Heritage Lottery Fund, Pilgrim Trust, the Church Buildings Council, the Maltwood Foundation, the Somerset Archaeology and Natural History Society and the Clark Foundation, amongst others. Plus, the numerous skills accrued through enthusiastic and capable volunteers and further demonstrated by the diversity of speakers here today. A mean feat indeed when you consider a context of dwindling public financial support for heritage, represented by a closure of 48% of libraries in the UK and 10% of museums in the last 10 years, with further announcements about Somerset's library heritage future expected today. When Jude first approached me about the possible involvement in this project, it immediately appealed to both my personal and my professional instincts. It represents that potent mix of community passion and world-class material culture. Through Jude adopting the role of project coordinator as part of her professional museum studies qualification, the snappily titled Associateship of the Museums Association, <laughs> uh, her involvement and the trust support also had discernibly practical benefits. The Alfred Gillett Trust, the charity that both Jude and I work for, has a mission to share the rich history of street shoe industry, demonstrating the principles of stewardship, integrity and community mindedness upon which the collection was founded and inspiring the next generation of creators, thinkers and innovators. A new charity, reconstituted in February of this year, but in existence for over a decade, with a brief to create a world-class heritage institution through best practice audience engagement and collections management, our work mirrors the outputs of St Cuthbert's PCC. The review of 420 sculpture fragments once hidden in the church walls, conducted with spectrum standard documentation procedures and a view to long-term preservation, shares its methodology with our own Clark family digitisation project, an independently funded development to share the letters, photographs and diaries of Margaret Clark Gillett, who in association with Emily Hobhouse, Edith Pye and her own relatives Hilda and Alice, helped to bring the horrors of the Boer War to the British public's attention and coordinate international relief efforts in South Africa and later China, Belgium, Austria and Spain. The Trust is also currently partnering in a five-year project to capture 70,000 artefacts of footwear and marketing origin in a Clark-sponsored digitisation project. Each project applies the same standards and procedures as St Cuthbert's PCC and encounters the same quandaries, representing an invaluable learning opportunity for Jute and for the wider trust. Though they vary in scale, both charitable institutions have similarly inspiring stories, from a mission of peacemaking and global enterprise to objects to inspire worship and belief. Importantly, each plays a role in understanding the history of humanity from a global and a local perspective. As a trustee of the Museums Association, I firmly believe in the tenets of our policy, Museums Change Lives. This vision advocates for a socially engaged sector which uses its heritage to benefit individuals and communities. It establishes the public's moral right to meaningful participation in heritage and inspires organisations to foster critical thinking, questioning and debate. It asserts that institutions are rooted in places and contribute to local <coughs> distinctiveness and that they should offer excellent experiences that meet public needs. These values are exemplified by St Cuthbert's project. Though its primary purpose differs from that of the Alfred Gillett Trust, the project team have deftly adopted elements of best practice museum procedure 
and adopted the collegiate approach exemplified by many religious organisations to undertake new research, preserve the delicate fragments, reach new audiences, galvanise volunteers and inspire pride in the congregation and beyond in the wider community. Clearly both the Trust and St Cuthbert's PCC have much to learn from each other. When the Rurados were first conceived of, it would have been beyond imagination to envisage a world in which people conveyed their opinions online. However, to illustrate my point, I'd like to share some of St Cuthbert PCC's abridged TripAdvisor ratings. An impressive church. I can understand why several reviewers mention that this is not the cathedral, because it's certainly an impressively large for a parish church and situated only a short walk from the cathedral itself. All church interiors are impressive in their own way, and this one has a beautiful ceiling, which I photographed extensively. Also, there were signs of how the church building is used during the week. It obviously plays host to children's activities, and I suspect other community-orientated activities too. I think it's good to see the church playing an increasingly active part of community life. A must-place visit for any Hot Fuzz fan. <laughs> this is the church used in the Hot Fuzz film, and it doesn't let you down, especially if you like to visit the sets of movies. The ceiling is spectacular, and the outside is fantastic to admire in the sunshine. Maybe not today. We visited Wells to see the cathedral, but found St Cuthbert's Church first, and were delighted when we stepped inside. It's absolutely beautiful, the stained glass windows are incredibly beautiful, and the whole ambiance is wonderful. We were so glad we found this lovely place. Beautiful, peaceful, and a great place to collect your thoughts. I'd like to commend the bravery of St Cuthbert's PCC in undertaking this project. As will no doubt become apparent throughout the course of today's proceedings, there are not many consecrated institutions willing to proactively engage with the wider public, and fewer still prepared to adopt best practice museum processes to preserve and share their heritage. I applaud the bravery and commitment of all involved and can confirm that I've checked and my childhood parish, though it now does have its own website, certainly doesn't have a TripAdvisor rating. I'm sure, like me, you're keen to find out what Jerry Sampson has uncovered in the painstaking photography, cataloguing, repackaging of St Cuthbert's fragments, and what Lynn Humphreys and Emma Norris have discovered throughout their scientific analysis of the collection. Today's programme will begin with focused analysis and presentations from um, the professional expert consultants, and then conclude this afternoon with an analysis of similar projects in religious and heritage contexts and a discussion about the possible next steps for St Cuthbert's PCC. There'll be many opportunities to ask questions and to share your thoughts on the current outputs and the future activities, so please don't be shy. I'd now like to hand you over to Jerry Sampson, who will talk you through the cataloguing component of the project. Thank you very much.